Hey Budget Gardeners, Vita Loca here. Join me today as I show you how I organize my seeds. So let's go. What seeds, you ask? Well, we're talking annuals, perennials, flowers, vegetables, you name it. I have a whole bunch of seeds over here in this box. I've been gardening for about 30 years, and during the 30 years, I really changed up the way that I store my seeds and the way that I organize them. I've found that it's very, very important to do that. When I first started gardening, I literally started with maybe a few packets of seeds, and it was very easy to keep myself organized with just a few packets of seeds. Over the years, as my gardening hobby has expanded, so has my seed collection. I think that's normal. Does that happen with you? And also, as I've been doing more gardening, I have found that I not only buy my seeds, but I really try to collect as many seeds as I can. And I've made a bunch of videos lately showing you my process for collecting different types of seeds, mostly from annuals and perennials. So I'll be sure to make a link to that playlist in case you want to check that out. You may be asking, do I really need to organize my seeds? It really depends on how many seeds you have and what kind of system you have in place. For many years, I used to just throw all my seeds in a cardboard box and they were just mixed in there. And what I found was I was missing the start dates of when I'm supposed to start different annuals and perennials. And it was becoming very confusing for me. But I think I have a system that really has been working for me. So this video will be divided into two parts. The first part will be going over this tote right here. And the second part will be just showing you the spreadsheet that I use to keep track of all my seeds. There are a lot of different ways you can store your seeds. And on the internet, I've seen a lot of people using these really cool photo album storage boxes. And I considered buying them. But before I bought even just one, I really thought hard about whether or not that system would work for me. And in the end, I decided it would not work for me. Even though it seemed very budget friendly, which I am all about saving money, I realized that because I tend to sometimes buy seeds in bulk, like peas or corn or green beans, I found that those bulk seeds would not fit in those type of storage systems. So I had to think about something different. And as I was looking around my house, I found this little tote right here. And I said, I think this will work for me, but it needs some modifications to it. The dimensions of it are 23 inches by 16 and a quarter inches by six inches. And I felt pretty confident that my seeds would fit in this bin. I like that because I just wanted to have one bin. I did not want to have three or four. And I also liked the depth of this. I knew that it was deep enough to accommodate those bulk seeds. So let's go ahead and take a closer peek at how I store my seed packets in this bin. So as I mentioned, one of my requirements for my seed storage system was that all the seeds be able to fit into one type of system. And the second requirement was I needed my storage system to be deep enough to accommodate not only these bigger seed packets, but also the bulk seeds that I've bought over time. Speaking of the bulk seeds, they came in a much bigger bag, and I took them out of the bigger bags, and I put them into smaller bags. But this whole section right here was in a much bigger bag. So you can see right off the bat that there are dividers in here. And that was extremely important for me to have in this system. And we made that using a very thin type of plywood that we already had in our house. And that's the beauty of this system. I'm trying to use things that I already had without buying anything. You can use a sturdier type of cardboard or, you know, just be creative if, with something that you have in your house or something you can buy pretty cheap. The key is you don't want it to be taller than the height of the box. So I'm going to go over how I organize my seeds. Right here, this whole entire row are all of my annuals. And not only are they all my annuals, they're alphabetized, starting with A in the front, so African daisy and all the way in the back are my zinnias. And if I had, let's say, a number of types of zinnias, they would all be in the back here. So I grouped all the like type of plants together and I alphabetized them. And this has really worked well for me. 
And you can see there are seed packets that I have bought, and then there are a bunch of seed packets where I've collected my own seeds. This section over here, these are my vegetables. I also have these alphabetized. And then right behind the vegetables, these are all of my herbs. Back here is a funny little section. These are all poppies. Technically, the poppies should go in this section here, but I'm planning on doing some winter sowing as well as direct sowing outside. And poppies tend to be a little tricky, so I just wanted them to be in their own section. Over here, these are the bulk seeds that we looked at earlier. And keep in mind, whatever's in here, I probably had three or four times this many of these peas in here. Just every year, I'm able to use maybe one or two packets. This section over here, these are my perennial seeds. They are also alphabetized. Last year was the first year where I went ahead and I used the winter sowing method specifically for all my perennials. And I will be doing that again this winter. I just don't like to use my grow light space for my perennials. And if I do use my grow lights, it'll just be for a small select few seeds that are here. Otherwise, most of these seeds here will be sown using the winter sowing method. And then the section over here, these are just more of the overstock large vegetable seeds that I have bought. In here, I have a couple of desiccant packages, one over on this side and one over on this side. And this just makes sure that there's no moisture in here. That is very important. You do not want any moisture with your seeds, otherwise they can rot and spoil the seeds. And on this side over here, these are just some random seeds. They might have been seeds that I collected, but I didn't have a name to them, or I might have collected a bunch of seeds and they were mixed in a packet. So there are just some random seeds on the side. Over here is a garden marker. I love using garden markers, especially when I'm labeling things like the seed packets that are over here. And then these are just some empty extra seed storing packages in case I need any more of those. Even though I have all of my seeds stored this way, you might decide to store them a different way. For example, you might decide to store your seeds in a way of the timing of year when you're gonna start the seeds. For example, this grouping could be the four to six week window. This could be the six to eight week window and etc. You could store them that way as well. So next I'm gonna share with you the spreadsheet that I've been using for the last few years. Now keep in mind, even the spreadsheet has changed over the years. And it's at a point now where I feel pretty confident that that spreadsheet and using it as a guide has worked for me. There are many reasons to keep track of your seeds on a spreadsheet or on a piece of paper or in some sort of journal. And one of the reasons is because you wanna know if you're running out of a seed that you need to buy more seeds. Also, it helps you keep track of which seeds to start when, kind of coinciding with the whole four to six, six to eight weeks before your last frost. So I like to use my spreadsheet for many different reasons. So let's take a look at that and I'll go over that in a little more detail with you. So here we are looking at my seed spreadsheet. You can see that I titled it Seed Planting Calendar and I use Google Spreadsheets to keep track of all of my seeds. You can use Microsoft Excel, you can even use a piece of paper, whatever really works for you. But I really like Google Sheets for my purposes. And down here at the bottom, I've added a different tab for different things. So we have annuals, herbs, veggies, perennials, and summer bulbs. When it comes to the annuals, which is the tab that we're on right now, that's pretty much all my flowers. So you can see I have different columns. So the name of the flower, how many weeks before the last frost each of these flowers should be started. I pretty much use a couple of different websites uh, like Burpee and uh, Baker Creek and a number of other sites to get a general idea of when to start different flower seeds and then which months to sow those seeds and this will change based on where you live and this is based on my zone 5b climate here in New Hampshire so I have a general idea of which month I'm supposed to be starting different seeds and then I basically created a number so that I have an idea of you know the number one seeds that I should be starting then I go to the number two seeds 
etc. And then I have some notes here, all different types of things, things that I find uh, when I'm going to websites that talk about those seeds. For example, which seeds that need light in order to germinate. That means don't press them in too deep. They should be surface sown. I might put a note that I need to buy more of those seeds for the next season. Uh, different things like that. Maybe they need a chill period. In this column here, I really don't use this column, but I did put it there as a placeholder. And it's just how many days until each of these flowers will bloom, starting from the day that I sowed them until the day that they will bloom. And then these are just some old columns. This was in 2022 when I sowed the seeds. I start off very good about putting dates in and then sometimes I just get busy and I don't get the dates put in here. And sometimes I just didn't get a lot, I didn't get to planting the seeds for certain flowers. And then over here, this is I, a new column that I created for this year that just says, okay, let's get going. It's 2024 almost. And pretty soon this column will get populated. I like to create a filter for each of the columns. So if I want to, for example, right here, month to sow number, I can basically say sort it from A to Z, which in this case it's 1 through whatever, 1 through 10. And that tells me, okay, I basically said any seed that needs to be sown in January will be given the number 1. Any seed that needs to be sown in February will be given the number 2. And that tells me I will be sowing wax begonias first sometime during the month of January. And the reason is because you can see it needs a long time for that plant to grow. It needs about 12 to 16 weeks before the last frost is when I'm supposed to start the seed. And then during February, I have impatience as well as the annual lobelia that I will be sowing. And I have pansies and some verbena. As I scroll down, you'll see for the month to sow area right here, that we are now getting into the March, which is, um, I gave it the number three, and we just keep making our way down into the spreadsheet. March is a very busy time for me, as well as April. And I have some homework to do. These are some seeds that I collected this year. I've never sown them before. So I just need to go back in here, populate this information, and then I will do a resort on this spreadsheet using the filters above. Again, some of this might seem a little overboard, but it does work for me. Uh, you'll notice right here, geranium, I have it crossed out. I'm probably gonna remove that from my spreadsheet. I have found that I can just overwinter the geranium plants and that works for me rather than starting the seeds. So I will probably not be starting those seeds this year. If we go to the herbs tab down over here, you can see that I have just a few herbs. I don't have a ton. I really don't plant a lot in my yard, so it's not an area where I have a lot of plants populated. Under veggies, I have very similar columns as we've already seen and I just put all the vegetables down that I have and same type of information that I'm keeping track of over here. And if you scroll down you can just see some of the uh, vegetables that I've planted in the past. Now perennials are an interesting one. I really like to use the winter sowing method for my perennials. We have a cold enough season here and a lot of these plants do require a cold wet stratification period. So it's a lot easier for me to just let nature take care of them and just winter sow them. And I have a ton of perennials that I will be winter sowing this year starting at the end of December. And I'll be sure to make a video when I start the seeds for a lot of these plants. The final tab here is the summer bulbs. 
So in this spreadsheet here, you can see that it's pretty empty. I need to get better at putting different information like some notes and when to sew different things. Although I do remember last year, I pre-sprouted a lot of these in pre-sprouting trays. Ranunculus in particular, you'll see that I pre-sprouted them early February and that worked out well for me. So I will probably be pre-sprouting them again around the same time. And I know I made videos on when I sprouted the peacock orchids, gladiolus, the dahlia. So I'll look back at some of my old videos and I'll populate that information. But it, it is good to keep track of all of this information because it just helps from year to year. So you know what worked and what didn't work. It just also keeps me organized and it gives me a general idea of which months I'll be very busy. I hope you found this video useful and I want to know if you keep track of your seeds in some sort of a spreadsheet or on a piece of paper and also I want to know how do you store your seeds? Do you have some sort of a system? Does it work for you? Or are you thinking maybe this type of system might work for you? So please leave a comment below and let me know because I want to know what you're doing and it might inspire me and give me ideas as well. So pretty soon I will be starting my seeds indoors. You can see I have grow lights behind me and I'm very excited. I can't wait. I hope this video motivated you and inspired you to get your seeds organized. It's a great time of year to be doing that. And until the next video, make it a great day with gardening.